So Time Magazine, they have been doing uh, a person of the year for, uh, I believe, 95 years now. It's something that they always do. And I mean, whatever, it, it's fine. And often they, it's kind of like a provocative clickbaity in these days type things where sometimes they pick a controversial person, uh, you know, just for the sake of eyeballs, right? It, it, it's high sugar fluff. It, it, it's what they're, it's what they do in, in this, for instance, the, the person, the most influential person of the year. Uh, and this year, here's some of the people who they have. Here are some of the people, the top three. Um, Liz Cheney, who Liz Cheney is, um, <laughs> she's a Republican. She has a war criminal for a father. Now, of course, you can't hold somebody accountable for what their parent does. But she has used her father's um, uh, legacy, if you want to call it that, uh, legacy of carnage. She has used that legacy to enrich herself and enrich her political career. And she signs off on what her father does. So she is pretty freaking terrible. But, um, but she doesn't like Trump. And she made a couple nice speeches on how she doesn't like Trump. So now she is a darling of the quote unquote resistance, which uh, when you find out what they're resisting, let me know because I'm not sure. Um, I think resisting progressive change is all they're resisting. But, um, but she's the hero there. Again, not because of any political views that have changed, uh, but because she doesn't like Donald Trump. Um, and again, the our society has the collective memory of a goldfish. So they're just like, oh, it doesn't matter that, you know, she's uh, she rubs elbows with war criminals who should be in jail. She she doesn't like Trump. So uh, everything's forgiven. And uh, and we love her now. They were even talking. She might run for president as a Democrat. So that's that's the big tent, folks, the big tent. That's why I really don't understand why Andrew Yang thinks it's a good idea to have a political party that has no policies. We already have that, Andrew. They're called the Democrats. You're saying people don't like the Democrats. You're duplicating the formula. The Democratic Party has no actual policies. There's horrible policies that a ton of people in the Democratic Party support. But the party as a whole, there's really no policies they actually stand for. There's this platitudes and then a couple of things like, well, oh, this would be nice. Maybe we'll do it. But we have a big wide tent, which, by the way, as Dave Anthony pointed out when he was on the show, that's the opposite of what a political party is supposed to be. A, a big wide tent is your community where, you know, you live in a community with a bunch of people with different political ideas and, and they come together, uh, hopefully for the goodness of their community and to work for the common good in their community. And, you know, if, if you're organizing a community garden, it, it's it's OK if you have some political differences with with the person you're planting carrots with. That's fine. But if you're a political party where the goal is to pursue policies that you think will make the country slash world a better frickin place and you don't agree on anything, that's like the opposite of what a political party is supposed to do. That's why in other countries that have more proportional representation, they don't have that. They have political parties with clearly defined policy agendas. And they have things like the communists and the socialists. And they're not the same parties with the centrist. Because they're like, well, hey, I'm a socialist. That's a capitalist. Our ideas are quite different. So we shouldn't be in the same freaking political party. That's not what a political party is supposed to do. So what a frickin' racket. Here's a political party. We have no ideas, no policies, um, but we're, we're, we're not as like brutally fascistic as this other one. So what are you going to do? What a great system, huh? Isn't it? So anyway, Liz Cheney, she's one of the people who's uh, most influential uh, of the year. She's one of the, the big nominees. Another nominee, uh, another nominee, of course, is Elon Musk. Elon Musk, who won it last year. Elon won it last year. He might get a repeat performance as he is screwing janitors out of their jobs a couple weeks before the winter holiday, as he is plummeting Twitter into oblivion. He is firing people en masse. He is uh, exploiting workers left and right in every capacity. Um, and he is banning accounts who make fun of him. You make fun of him, you get your account permanently suspended. Uh, yeah, that guy might be among most influential people of the year. And uh, here's the other person 
who is being considered. And, and this is the real reason why I wanted to talk about this. Another person who's being considered is Ron DeSantis. Now, you guys have probably heard me say this before. I'm going to keep saying it, and I'm not going to stop. Ron DeSantis is by far the most dangerous person in American politics, by far. And the normalization of him is extremely dangerous. And for Time, I get it, the Time magazine, this is just a bunch of fluff. This is just them trying to get clicks. This is them being provocateurs. I get it. I get it that that influential person of the, it's not some like huge thing really, but a lot of people fricking see it. Okay. Every single year, a lot of people see this in 2020. It was Obama or, or excuse me. It was Biden and Kamala in 2021. It was Musk. It might be Musk again. And DeSantis is up for it. And if someone like Ron DeSantis were to get such a thing, that would just further normalize what this guy is really all about and what this guy is he is a theocratic fascist that's not an embellishment that is an accurate description of what he is and he is very very competent and very very talented for that matter at putting a reasonable face and putting a reasonable quote unquote spin on horrible horrible policies he's putting a reasonable spin on a piece of policy that is basically trying to uh, knock trans youth out of existence. The don't say gay bill, if you actually took the time to read it, what it really does is it just makes it that much harder for LGBTQ youth to get any resources. And it, and it takes away any type of privacy they have that they might need if they're going through something and maybe their parents aren't so supportive. It's not about parental choice. It's certainly not about, quote unquote, grooming. And by the way, how insulting is it to, to entertain some idea that counselors who help LGBTQ youth are, are groomers? How sick is that? But he's putting a, quote, reasonable spin on this horrible policy. And he's putting a reasonable on, spin on the idea of banning protesting, what he's also trying to do. And he's putting a reasonable spin. Colin, pull, pull up the uh, pull up the tweet about his uh, his anti woke agenda, the quote unquote anti woke agenda. Although people don't know exactly what they that means. Well, here I'm going to tell you what it means. DeSantis's lawyers were forced by the court to define quote unquote woke. The lead lawyer described it as the belief there are systemic injustices in American society in the need to address them. That's how they're defining woke. You think something's wrong with American society, which look around, what could give you that idea? That's quote unquote woke. And Ron DeSantis is against that. He's anti-woke. So he's trying to put a positive edgelord spin on if you think something's wrong with the American society, we want to shut you up. We want to shut you up in the classroom. We want to shut you up online. We want to shut you up. Um, if you are trying to protest, we want to shut you up if you're trying to strike. This is what Ron DeSantis is doing. And along with the Supreme Court, who's going after gay marriage. And now they're, they're kind of sending out the dog whistle about interracial marriage, too. All they need is a huge theocratic fascist sitting in the White House who has a level of competency that Trump didn't have. Hell, who has a level of competency that George W. Bush didn't even have. And that is Ron DeSantis. You look at the stuff that this guy is doing. You look at the stuff that this guy believes. Wow. And they are normalizing him. They are normalizing him constantly. And they're even able to, to point at some things. Oh, well, he's he actually is uh, he's against fracking. He's against. Yeah. OK, that's uh, <laughs> that's I mean, obviously, fracking's terrible. But first of all, would he ever actually deliver on such a thing? And second of all, um, gee, making it out like environmental issues are important and then being absolutely terrible at everything else. Th that does sound familiar. Someone else used that playbook before, by the way, that playbook has been used before. There's even a, a, a movement out there called, wait for it, eco-fascism. It's already a thing. So 
the normalization of this guy and, and let's pull up the 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 uh the headline from uh fake news i mean fox news uh college just so they see the headline that that is the source here liz cheney ron DeSantis, elon musk among finalists for time person of the year that's according to fox news and of course that's been uh, all throughout the blogosphere uh the normalization of ron DeSantis is a special level of danger and i could say via my personal assessment this is a danger we've never quite seen in any of our lifetimes this is a danger that exceeds that of reaganism which you know we've been living under reaganism since 1980 probably even longer than that really i mean technically i mean obviously reagan wasn't you know but 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 kind of like a neoliberal era started coming in with Jimmy Carter. And then, of course, it got exacerbated with Reagan. But anyway, we've been living under Reaganism pretty much since 1980. We've had variations of Ronald Reagan in president as president since 1980. Ron DeSantis, I think, would pass all that up. I honestly think if Ron DeSantis were to become president, he would be even more destructive than the Bush administration. And I do believe the Bush administration was by far the most destructive administration in my lifetime. Way worse than Trump, way worse than Obama, way worse than Clinton. And by the way, all these all these people I mentioned did a hell of a lot of damage. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to downplay their damage at all. But the Bush administration set us on a path of an economy of war that we are still on our knees on 20 years later. And we're going to be for a long freaking time. They set the axis of evil on path. They set... Uh, the path to set the Middle East on fire, on path. And Obama just kept it on autopilot. He said he was going to take it off autopilot. He didn't. He kept it on autopilot, and so did Trump. So I think Ron DeSantis could pass up the Bush administration. And I'll never forget, the day Bush left office, I thought to myself back then, I thought, man, that will probably be, I take a little comfort in knowing that'll be the worst president I see in my lifetime. Because if we get one worse than that, there ain't going to be a country anymore.